everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to read you another book, and this book is Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reese, and I'm using this with permission from Scholastic Books. Now typically when I read you a book, I just read it like normal, right? I just read the, the words right off the page. But do you think that a book can be musical? Can it have a beat? Can it have rhythm? Are the words maybe like lyrics with the rhyming? Hmm, why don't we test that out today? I'm going to put some music on in the background while I read this to you. And then I want you to think, is this book musical? Let's get started. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The war dogs started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons and teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffe can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless, so I feel like such a clot. He crept out from the dance floor and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. He found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. Imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hoofs had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. I am dancing, yes, I'm dancing, I am dancing, Gerald cried. Go, Gerald. Go, Gerald. Go, Gerald. Then one by one each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald took it on and watched them quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle, we must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply tore around and finished with the bow. He raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. <laughs> so what do you think? Is that book musical? I think it definitely is. Do you think any other books can be musical too? Do you think that you could find a book that has a beat and a rhythm to it? Maybe some rhyming words? Why don't you take a look through your books at home and see if you can find a book that you think is musical? You can let me know what book you find. Uh, on my website, or you can also fill out the completed music activity survey. Now, I also want you to think about what this book was about. Gerald thought he was really bad at dancing, but it turned out he just needed the music that he loved to be amazing at it. So my final thing for you to do this year is put on your absolute favorite song, and I want you to have a huge dance party to it. Congratulations, everybody. We made it to the end of the school year. I'm going to miss you guys so much over the summer. I look forward to teaching most of you again next year. To my fifth graders, I will miss you so, so much. You are going to do amazing things in middle school. To the rest of you, I'll see you real soon. Bye, everybody.